Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 9, which is covering compound. So in this chapter, there are going to be four subtopics altogether, which is 9.1 interaction, 9.2 nomenclature, 9.3 preparation, and 9.4 chemical properties. So in this video, we're going to focus on the two subtopics first, which is 9.1 introduction and 9.2 nomenclature. So in this video, we're going to look into the general formula of aldehyde and ketone, where both of these is known as the carbonyl compound. Also, we're going to draw the structure and name the carbonyl compound, which is aldehyde and ketone, according to the IUPAC nomenclature, and also we have to include the common names. Okay, so without any further ado, let us start. So for carbonyl compound, it will be consisting of the functional group of carbonyl, which is C double bond O, and it's going to have a general formula of CNH2NO. So carbonyl compounds are essentially a polar compound, and it is susceptible for the nucleophilic addition reaction. And generally, aldehyde is going to be more reactive than ketone toward the nucleophilic attack. Okay, so now let us draw the structure of aldehyde first. So aldehyde will consist of C double bond O and one of the attachment that is attached to the carbon is going to be hydrogen. Okay, and the C double bond O is a polar bond because oxygen is going to carry a partially negative charge due to, the, due to its electronegativity and the carbon as a result is going to carry a partially positive charge. Due to the difference in electronegativity, the nucleophile, which is electron rich, gonna be able to attack the C double bond O, and that is why they can undergo the nucleophilic addition reaction. Okay, and the R here can be any alkyl, aryl, or can also be hydrogen. Okay, so when C double bond O H attached attach with another H. It is known as methanal. Okay, if C double bond O H attached with CH3, it consists of two carbon, then it's gonna be ethane, but now because it is an aldehyde group, so it's gonna be ethanal. Okay, so it can also be a benzene ring here as well. Okay, uh, at the same time, we can also look into ketone, but the difference here is just at this side here where the carbon is going to be attached with two alkyl group or the aryl group. But just now, it only has one. Okay, so it has no hydrogen here. So similar properties, the oxygen is going to carry a, negative, a partially negative charge, and this one is going to carry a partially positive charge. Okay, and this will allow the nucleophilic attack to enter here. Okay, and this is why both aldehyde and ketone can undergo nucleophilic addition. However, aldehyde is more reactive because it has a small atom here, which is hydrogen. So it is easier for the nucleophile to enter because of the less steric hindrance. Okay, and other factors is that is due to the electron donating group, but essentially it's okay for you to understand that it is due to the steric hindrance. Okay? And for ketone, the R and R prime here can also be any alkyl or aryl group. Alright? So now let us do the nomenclature of the aldehyde. So basically, aldehyde is named by substituting the letter E of an alkyl with AL. Okay? For example, methanol here. So methanol. It comes from the word methane. So methane will have CH4, right? But now when we change it into aldehyde, so this one is methane, the E here is going to be changed into AL. So it's going to be methanol. Okay? And then uh, the basic name of the aldehyde is going to be dependent on the longest change with the C. HO group, which is the carbonyl group here. Okay? The C double bond O here, and then H here. Okay? And then the numbering should start from the this carbon here. So we're going to look into the nomenclature uh, at the latter slide. Okay? But for now, let us focus on the common name and IUPAC name first, which is the 
sometimes the common name gonna be used in exam. For example, the Greek net reagent gonna react with formaldehyde. Okay, so sometimes they are they giving you a common name. So you need to be able to convert the common name into a structure or into the IUPAC name. Okay, so this is why I put it in the table so that it's easy for you to understand and relate it from one to another. Okay, so for the second structure here, which is ethanol, it comes from the word ethane. So it has two carbon and then one of the carbon here is attached with C double bond O and then ended with hydrogen. So one and two, ethane, but because it is aldehyde, so it's going to become ethanol. Okay, and then same goes to here, which is the propanol. So we have three carbon, one, two, and one, two, three. So it's going to be propane. But if we change um, the one of the carbon to C double bond O H, it's going to become propanol. Okay. Or you can also draw it in terms of this way. And remember that aldehyde, which is C double bond O, and then H here always be at the end of the carbon chain. Sentiasa di hujung. Okay? It cannot happen in the middle. Alright? Now, we let us look into another structure. For example, the pentanal here. So, pentanal refers to five carbon chain, which is one, two, three, four, and five. Okay? And the aldehyde should happen at the last carbon chain either here or here okay so one two three four five should be pentane but now because it is an aldehyde so it's going to become pentanal okay and here we they write it as ch23 because it refers to ch2 here ch2 here ch2 here and then ch3 okay so they just wanted to simplify it as ch3 CH2 and then 3 here because it repeats 3 times and then C O H or C double bond O H okay and the same goes to butanal where 1 2 3 4 and aldehyde gonna be at the end okay and the other common name and IUPAC name which is being shared is the phenyl phenyl methanol or the benzaldehyde so you have looked about this in the chapter of benzene so it is a benzene attached with an aldehyde. So it's gonna be a phenyl methanol or benzaldehyde. Okay. So now we're gonna do the naming for the aldehyde. So for in this case, uh, we have one and two. So one and two here refers to the ethanol, and then at carbon number two, it's gonna be attached with phenyl group here. So the phenyl here is C six H five. So it's gonna be to phenyl ethanol. Okay, and for this part, we have one, two, three, and four. Okay, so when we have four carbon and this is the functional group of aldehyde, we know that it's gonna be a butanal. Okay, however, at carbon number three, they're gonna be a double bond here. So it's gonna be three butenal. We change our A into E. And then for our last structure at the below here, we have one, two, three, and four. So we have to find the longest carbon chain. Okay. And we need to give the priority to the carbonyl group here. Okay, not alcohol. So maybe some of you are gonna say one, two, three, four, and then it's gonna become butanol. However, this is the priority. Okay, and uh, you cannot go 1, 2, 3, 4 because if you go 1, 2, 3, 4, you only have one substituent here. If you use this straight way, you're going to have 1 and 2 substituent. Okay, so the naming is the same as alkene, so you have to give the longest carbon chain first and then the one that gives the most number of substituent. 
okay and in this case we need to give the priority to the um, c double bond o here so one two three four so it is refers to a butanal and at carbon number two we have the ethyl group and then at carbon number three we have the hydroxy group okay so e will come first and hydroxy will come later so it's going to become three hydroxy because h and then we got two ethyl okay and as mentioned we need to follow the priority so this is the same thing as what you have learned in the chapter of benzene so we know that c double bond o is at the higher priority in comparison to alcohol oh group here so that is why we our parent name going to be the aldehyde which is the butanol here not one two three four butanol okay bukan sebagai alcohol tetapi dia adalah aldehyde okay so be really very careful and look back into the priority here okay now we're going to do ketone so ketone as mentioned it's going to have a c double bond o but now the c here going to be attached with two r group aldehyde it can be both hydrogen or one of them going to be r okay so this one is ketone and this one is aldehyde okay so the same thing we need to substitute, substitute the letter e of the corresponding alkene with o and e one okay so let's say if we have a uh, one two three here so this is known as propane because it has three carbon but now when we change the one of the carbon to become c double bond o the e here going to be changed into o and e which is the propanone which is an example of ketone so propanone is always be at the middle it cannot be at the uh, side okay and then same goes to here if we have one two three four five it's going to be a cyclopentane but when it become an ketone here a ketone here so it's going to become cyclopentanone so e we change it into o and e all right and the longest carbon chain with carbonyl group is numbered so that c in the carbonyl group get the smallest number okay so similar thing as before so let's say that if we have a one two three four five here which is a pentanone we need to do the numbering so we should do the numbering which give the give the lowest number to the carbon here so we can do the numbering from here or we can do the numbering from here so let's say if i start the numbering from here one two three four five i will get two pentanone okay but if i make a numbering from here i will get one two three four and five i will get four pentanone so in this case the two pentanone gonna give the smaller number so the four pentanone here is wrong okay and that is why the name gonna be two pentanone okay now we're gonna look into uh the IUPAC and common name so the other the popular one is the acetone here so when the common name is acetone the IUPAC name gonna be the propanone okay and usually for the propanone we don't write it as two propanone this is because we know that propane will have three carbon and then the c double bond o always at the middle so that's it why that is why we don't indicate it with two propanone unless when there is a substituent if it exists as like this we don't usually write number two here okay and for butanone it consists of one two three and four and then we can do the c double bond o here where we can get it as two butanone or you can do it like this which is also two butanone because your numbering can go from one two three four or one two three four so both are correct okay and the common name gonna be metal ethyl ketone and the two point two pentanone we have looked into it 
at the previous slide. So 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and at the same time, the pentanon can also be a 3 pentanon. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So just now we put it as, as 2 pentanon. However, we can also make it at here so that it can become 3 pentanon. Okay. And the other part is we have the phenyl ethanol or the common name is acetophenone. So this is also quite a popular one. So ethanol we're gonna have two carbon. So one and one and two because we need to give the numbering to the C double bond O here. And then it's gonna be attached with phenyl here. So it's gonna be one phenyl ethanol. Okay. And this one is the benzophenone where C double bond O is attached with benzene ring at both sides. Okay. Okay, so for this one, you're going to share the same IUPAC and the same common name, which is benzophenone or diphenyl because of two phenyl group, methanone because of one carbon. Alright. And now we're going to do the naming for the ketone. So for this case, um, we can do the naming here, which is 1, 2, and 3. And looking from here, we know that it is a ketone because it attached with R group and another alkyl group. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, it's going to be a propanone. So 2 propanone. And then at carbon number 1, it's going to be attaching with cyclo. Pentyl. Okay, because it's cyclopentane, but now it becomes a substituent, it's going to be cyclopentane. And then we usually denote at number 2 because it has a substituent. Okay, so it's going to become 2 propanone and 1 cyclopentyl. So the total name is going to be 1 cyclopentyl, 2 propanone. Okay, and for this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. So we're going to have a cyclohexanone, okay, and we have two substituents here. So the substituent here is known as the isopropyl, and here going to be methyl. Okay, so I, M. So we're going to write met isopropyl first at the front, and it attached at carbon number 3. And methyl going to be attached at carbon number 5. Okay, and we have to follow the numbering here, which is the clockwise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, instead of anti-clockwise, because if you go anti-clockwise, you will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so number 3 is, number 3 going to be at methyl. Supposedly, number 3 is supposed to be at I, which is the lower alphabetical order. Okay, so that is why... We do the clockwise direction. So it's going to be 5 methyl and then 3 isopropyl. So the total name is going to be 3 isopropyl, 5 methyl, cyclohexanone. Okay, and for this one, it's going to consist of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it's going to be pentanone, but then it has 2 ketone here. So it's going to become Pentin dion and it attached at number 2 and number 4. Okay, and at carbon 1 and 5, it's going to have promine and bromine. So it's going to be 1, 5, dipromo, 2, 4, pentan, dion. Okay, so this is the full name here. And as mentioned, this is going to be your reference as well for the priority. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!